Hello lads, welcome to this room here on Try Hack Me. It is called Intro to Defensive Security. It is from what I can see uh, some sort of information side. There's a small task ahead in the last task here. Something with view side and, and we're gonna find a flag it seems. So basically let's talk about what is defensive security. Now, easy enough, you could say that defensive security is the opposite of offensive security. Well, I guess that is the common way to say it. So if you have, let's assume, a lot of hacks that you're sending to a server, a lot of exploits you're trying to exploit on a server, then on the other side, some guy's gonna sit there trying to defend against it by having server hardened, installing patches, configured stuff, having intrusion detection, intrusion prevention system, having firewalls and all that stuff. And that is uh, that is usually uh, what they do. Blue teams are part of the defensive security landscape, which is also true. Um, let me zoom in a bit into this text. It basically says some of the tasks that are related to defensive security includes Awareness training, it's uh, patching, updating systems, setting up preventive security defenses like intrusion prevention systems, stuff like that, and do logging and monitoring devices. <clears throat> this is more or less what you're going to do. Now, if you sit in a room and you look at traffic, you look at log files, and you try to verify whether you're under attack or not, you could be in a security operations center or also known as a SOC center. Now, depending on, on, on what kind of role you have, the different kind of things, through intelligence, digital forensics and instant response, and of course, malware analysis. So, which team focuses on defensive security? That was right here, was the blue teams. Let me basically just take that. Blue team, I guess, it would be the right answer. Yeah, not really, yes. <clears throat> the next part here talks about areas of defensive security. Now, we did talk about the security operating center, and the other way is called, or the room is called, the area is called threat intelligence, uh, digital forensics, instant response, digital forensics, and instant response. So, well, another part, malware analysis, and stuff like that. So, that's a lot of, you know, areas you can work in. If you are in the SOC center, you're looking at, well, you're looking for violations, basically, and the policy is being broken. Can you find any any traffic that is, you know, in a way, mal-transformed? Um, usually, when you sit in a SOC center, you're looking at some screens, and I guess this is what the pitch is trying to tell you, that you're looking at some screens, usually in a company, and they created some sort of system that's going to, you know, try and intercept traffic and, and basically read traffic. So how can that be possible? <clears throat> now, I'm going to open up Paint and just draw a quick drawing. The thing is that you usually think of, let's say, the company here, that the, the security company, so that's the security company. It doesn't really matter what it is, which company it is. Um, and then they sell something, uh, uh, some security solutions saying, if you divert all traffic through our pipe here, now this is a very small our pipe right here, there we go. Then <clears throat> this is gonna check for, let's see, uh, insecurities what basically this is is a uh, some sort of proxy server or some server that other companies which are these different sizes of round circles they divert the traffic toward this proxy so everything is just going this way now what is really happening is that the traffic is going in here and before it enters out to the whatever internet, I should write ENET here, there we go, there is a certain mechanism 
inside of this that's gonna read the traffic so the traffic is entering the mechanism either it goes this way or it goes directly up to the sock sender and then the company can say all oh, right so the sock sender and this is where we have people sitting watching the screen saying oh i see there's a vulnerability uh, this can only be be possible because all traffic is diverted through some sort of channel you know some sort of you know proxy vpn whatever you're gonna call it um and then they, they, they can monitor the traffic from different computers. So if let's say there's a botnet installed on, on this uh, server here, or not company I mean, then some sort of traffic will be you know tracked and it will doot, to go to the insecurities and all the way down to the security operations. And then they will verify whether there's something going on and tell them how to stop it right there. That is basically what a security operation center is all about. <clears throat> so. The next thing is uh, threat intelligence, and um, threat intelligence is all about how you gather the, the, the knowledge of potential enemies or potential attacks. So that's basically you looking at you know a lot of articles, you read stuff, you try and, 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 and gather your threat intelligence it would, it's just like think about you, you have some sort of knowledge base about threats that's basically what it means um digital forensics and incident response also known as defer is these common things that circle around you know digital forensics incident incident response and malware analysis now when you when you go to a company site and you we're tasked to, let's say, do some digital forensics on a phone. It could be, you know, this phone here, an iPhone. Then, of course, <clears throat> you need to put the phone into a Faraday bag in order to not make it communicate with outside whatever servers or signals. So you're doing digital forensics on a particular amount of devices or, or one device, depending on the task at hand. <clears throat> then there is the the subcategory called incident response which is down here which is more about preparation detection analysis containment eradication recovery and post incident activity and there's a figure here you can look at and say like you you this is a thing to just you know go circles it's an agile you know uh, thing so so basically you need to prepare for your detection analysis and that is all about containing the virus, the, the attack, the whatever, the eradication of it, you know, is is going to um, give you like a post in incident activity. So that's after the actual uh, actual incident, and then you're gonna go back again and prepare for the next one. So incident response is basically all about you know when the shit hits the fan, how are we gonna cope with it. Malware analysis is uh, something that is uh, highly sought for. It is uh, a lonely job. It's looking in log files and Wireshark. I'm not really sure if you're gonna like it or not. It's um, very specific, looking you know through um, malware executional file, binary files, you know, and trying to figure out what is going on in this particular file. There are different things, you know, mentioned on the website. You can read about virus, Trojan horse, ransomware, stuff like that. And and basically it's it's a lot of number cracking. So we've got some questions here, like what would you call the team of cybersecurity professionals that monitor network systems? So so basically we're gonna go up here monitoring a system. That would probably be a uh, security operation center. <clears throat> I am guessing that would be that. So we're gonna put it in. What does defer stand for now? No need to type it, it is right here. We just found it. So digital forensic instant response, there we go. Put it in. What kind of malware require use to pay money and regain that is ransomware? Let's just type it. All right, so this is uh, rounding up the second task and we're gonna right away to the third task. Practical example of defensive security. What would uh, be a typical task that you will be doing as a security analyst? Click on the view side to follow along. 
I have no idea what we're going to do on this side here, but it definitely looked like some log files and 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 whoops. <laughs> and we can go through all of this and it seems that we we got some stuff here and either successful, you know, SSH authentication attempt, an unauthorized connection attempt, you know, John Doe locked in, multiple failed locked attempt by John Doe. Login failure, specified account password expired, and so on. So it would seem that we need to, you know, click on something, and I suspect we're gonna click on the the red one. So let's do this. Maybe maybe we should copy paste the IP. Can I do? No, I cannot. This is driving me crazy so let's see can I copy paste this copy <laughs> hey I did submit it so um, we uh, we copy pasted the IP and we found the database and we you know I, I, I it's just you know some sort of yeah. I don't know if this is even gonna work in a browser let me just put it in yeah <laughs> would be good to good to find so we can see that um, choose whom you would escalate this event to. So basically, we are. Uh, I would say this the SOC team lead. And let's see. If we're gonna block the IP of, of the one that I copied. So I think. We just need to go back and say, what was it? The 143, no, it's not there. Okay, I see. Oh, so we need to take this IP now and go back and then basically put it in. And we did what we did and we got the flag. So I guess the way that I solved it was correct. And it's very difficult sometimes to try hack me rooms, you know, when they create some, some in, in in browser game, I think it's, it's it's a wonderful way of doing it because it can be very isolated, but it's also a bit weird, in many ways. So what I really hope you learned this video is something about what kind of things do you do in the different kind of roles, turning around defensive security. I hope you learned something in this video, and if you did so, please consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a comment below. I'm gonna see you again online. Have a nice day.